G'day all, and welcome to my first tutorial on uh, floating point values in computers. So computers represent real numbers in a very complex way, and a solid knowledge of exactly how they represent these numbers uh, is excellent for optimization and programming, but it also really shows just how clever these machines are, and uh, you know how smart the people that invented them are. It's pretty amazing stuff. So there's many tutorials on this topic, but they don't tend to explain how to get the bit pattern, how to convert to and from uh, floating point values. And uh, I've decided that I'll do exactly that, you know, show how to convert them and show exactly what every bit means. And uh, when I'm done, so this is this is actually going to take a little, a little, a little uh, mini series. So maybe there'll be four or five tutorials on uh, IEEE 754. But when I'm done, I'll post the uh, slides as a PDF to the website, and you can download them from there. Okay, so basically, computers represent numbers with fractional parts as floating point. And this just means that the decimal point, or the radix point, can move up and down in the number, uh, as opposed to a fixed point system where the decimal will be in a particular place and there'll be so many digits left or so many digits right of the uh, decimal or radix point. So these numbers are sometimes called real numbers as opposed to whole numbers which are called integers. And the problem with representing real numbers in computers is that there's an awful, awful lot of them. In fact, there's infinity. Uh, there's infinity different real numbers between any two real numbers. So if we take two real numbers such as 1.0 and 2.0 uh, we know that there's infinity numbers in between there's 1.5, there's 1.75, there's 1.8, there's 1.9999999999 uh, yeah there's infinity numbers between those even so in between you know 1.5 and 1.75 there's another infinity uh, real numbers between those two and computers don't have uh, an infinite amount of space you know they work on bits and bytes and there's a finite number of these bits and bytes. So computers just can't deal with um, an infinite number of real numbers. So the solution is to create a format of storing floating point values that can deal with lots of tiny numbers and lots of very large numbers, and it rounds them to the nearest values. So instead of storing 1.9999, you know, that sort of a number there, the computer will actually round it and just store 2.0. Uh, it's close enough for just about all calculations, and it's pretty quick. So the actual standard that we use in modern computers is from the uh, IEEE, which is the Institute of Electronics and Electrical Engineers, and it's called the 754 floating point standard. Uh, there was a few versions of these. There was one in, I think, maybe 83 or 87. Another version came out in, in the 90s at some time, and I think there was one in maybe 2003 or something like that. But uh, they're all basically the same standard, just um, updates of it. And it's basically a set of rules to abide by with a floating point system. So it deals with, yeah, rounding and, and, and the bit patterns to use to store these things. And just about every single uh, modern computing device abides by these standards to some degree. Uh, x86 CPUs use the standard for 32 and 64 bit floating point numbers, and those are called float or double in C. And the standard defines not only representations of numbers in binary, or you know, with zeros and ones, but also other things like NAN, which means not a number. Maybe you've done some invalid operation like 0 divided by 0. Uh, it's also got bit patterns that represent infinity and negative infinity. It's got rules for rounding numbers and rules for how to handle exceptions when, um, yeah, different illegal things happen, such as divisions by zero and that sort of thing. So it's not perfect, uh, but it's very, very good. And it can't actually store recurring digits, which is uh, one of the drawbacks. So something like one point, oh, not one point, sorry, um, one over three, one third, uh, it's always going to round that slightly. So in base 10, or, or the decimal counting system, we would write that as 1.3 recurring. But this IEEE 754 standard doesn't have um, a way of representing that. So it allows us to store really large numbers by reducing the precision by a little bit. 
Yeah, and it allows us to store really small numbers as well, but not perfectly. Some numbers it can actually store perfectly, but others it can't. And the basic idea of IEEE 754 standard is that numbers are stored in scientific notation. So computers don't use base 10, they use uh, binary or base 2. But scientific notation, you know, you can write it in, in either base. So something like uh, this number just here, negative 1.5 multiplied by 10 to the power of 0, uh, that's called scientific notation. And we'd read that as negative 1.5 in base 10. Uh, likewise, we could write exactly the same number in binary. We could write negative 1.1 by 2 to the power of 0. And that would mean exactly the same thing. That's negative 1.5 in binary. Um, so there's some whole part, some fractional part, and it's multiplied by some power of the base. And the base is 2 in binary. So reading a scientific number is pretty easy, really. It's um, broken up into four parts. There's the sign, the mantissa, which is sometimes called the significant, or the significand, uh, or the coefficient. There's also the base, or the radix, and the exponent, or the power. So right here, the sign is uh, negative, and I've written them in red. And the mantissa is uh, green, and it's 1.5 here, or 1.1 in binary. And then the by, or the, the multiplication, which is implied uh, in the standard that we're going to look at. Uh, I've just you know painted that white. But then the base I've put in yellow, and it can be 10, it can be 2, it can be 5, 12. 28, it can be whatever you want, but usually we're talking about, you know, base 10 or or decimal, or maybe we're talking about binary or base 2. Um, yeah, so the final thing is the exponent or the power, and that's what the base is, uh, you know, that's the power of the base. So negative 1.5 by 10 to the 3 would be how I would read that. And this one in binary, I would read as negative 1.1 by 2 to the 3, or 2 to the power of 3, in other words. And you just multiply it. So negative 1.1 in binary is negative um, 1.5. And multiplied by 2 to the power of 3. Well, 2 to the power of 3 is 2 by 2 by 2, which gives you uh, 8. So negative 1.5 multiplied by 8. That's what that number means. And this one means negative 1.5 multiplied by 10 to the power of 3. And 10 to the power of 3 is uh, 1,000. So that's going to be um, move this decimal point right three places. And uh, you'll have your number. So that's how you read scientific notation. And the general binary format for numbers, so they do use that scientific notation in the IEEE. Uh, the general binary format is something like this. Um, the numbers are stored in three parts, the sine, the exponent, and the mantissa. And the base is assumed. We're talking about computers here, and they use base 2, or binary. So that's assumed. We don't have to write that in our number at all. Uh, it looks something like this in memory. We'll go into more detail. In fact, we'll go, we'll go into much more detail later, but for the time being, it looks something like this. And this pattern goes for C++ floats as well as doubles. And doubles in C++ take up twice as much memory as a float, but they can store much greater precision. You know, they can store larger numbers and they can store more precise small numbers. Um, there is also, in um, our CPUs, we've got a, an auxiliary... Uh, processing unit, which is called the x87 floating point unit. And this actually special, specializes in larger floating point arithmetic, and it can do calculations on 80 bit floating point values that sometimes are called uh, extended precision numbers. So they're stored in much the same way. Okay, so by tradition, uh, when you draw out a bit pattern, you usually draw the uh, least significant bit on the right hand side and the most significant bit on the left hand side. So if we're talking about 32 bit floats or, or just floats in C++, uh, this will be bit 0 right over here. And all the way in between is going to be bits uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, etc, etc. All the way up to the sine bit, which is going to be bit number 31. Uh, or if you're talking about you know, doubles in C++, it's going to be bit 0 on the left, sorry, on the right, and bit 63 on the left. Yeah, they're called the least and most significant bits because, um, you know, changing the least significant bit is going to have the least effect on the size of the number that you're representing. 
Whereas changing the sign bit, you know, changing a number from negative to positive has got a massive effect on the, uh, yeah, on the number. Okay, so it looks something like this. Well, this is just how you map it to the uh, scientific notation. We've got the sign bit here in uh, cyan or light blue, and that's either plus or minus. We've got the exponent, which comes next. That's the um, green one here, and that comes over here to the um, 2 to the power of exponent position. And finally, we've got the mantissa, which is, I don't know, kind of a salmon color, I guess you'd say. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah, I've, I've drawn that just here. So plus or minus the mantissa multiplied by 2 to the power of exponent. That's pretty much what we're doing. And the sizes are all different. So when you're talking about 32 bits, 30, uh, sorry, 64 bits or 80 bit floating point numbers, um, the sizes of each of these parts is different. So for a 32 bit, which is a, a single precision float or a real 4 in assembly, uh, or just a float in C++. It's got the following sizes. We've got one bit for the sign. That's only got to represent negative or positive, so that's only one bit. It can be either on or off. Uh, the exponent is 8 bits. The mantissa is 23 bits. So 23 plus 8 plus 1 gives us 32 bits. And the sizes of the parts in a 64-bit double are pretty sort of similar. It's just a bit larger. So once again, we've got a single bit for the sign. Uh, you only need one bit to represent negative or positive. The exponent in a 64-bit double is uh, 11 bits long. And the mantissa is 52 bits. So 52 plus 11 plus 1 gives us all 64 bits of a double. And finally, the, the largest uh, floating point value that our CPUs can generally handle is the 80-bit extended precision float. And it looks a little something like this. So the sign bit, once again, is 1 bit. The exponent is 15 bits. And the mantissa is 64 bits. So the 80-bit floating point values in our CPUs are actually uh, ever so slightly different in the way that they're read and manipulated. But we'll look at that later. Anyway, that's it for now. So that's just a general introduction. And uh, later on, we'll get to exactly how to convert to and from these and precisely what the bits uh, inside the different parts to the uh, numbers means. But for now, uh, thank you for listening. See ya.